Um, well, you know what? Let, let me take a, a, a sponsor break, Damien, actually, before we do that. So I want to thank the sponsors, uh, A1 Design Print Shop, for, for all your business printing needs located at 1200 Chamberlain Avenue in Bakersfield, California. Lap Insurance Services with Allstate. You're in good hands for your car insurance needs located at 550 Central Avenue, Shafter, California. And last but not least, Losa with Senkow Truck Show and I-5 Smokeout. Make sure to get your tickets before they sell out. Tegusa Al Podcast. <laughs> And that's how we start the show. Welcome everybody to Amino Me Gusta, Ami Me Encanta podcast. Um, hope you guys are doing okay. Este, so today we have a, a, a different type of guest that we're used to on this uh, podcast. His name is Alejandro Aguilar. That's right. Welcome. Welcome, you. welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> este, is there a... Uh, oh, and my co-host, Prisma. Yeah, he forgets about the main one. <laughs> I don't want to... <laughs> La mera mera, he sorry, forgets. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> and then myself, Fernando. Um, oh, do you guys want to tell your uh, your uh, Instagrams? Just to... Uh, so I can pop well, it up on the screen. My, mine's well. pretty easy. Mine's Alejandro.bfg. Alejandro.bfg. Make sure you guys follow him. Yes. And mine is Ms. M Z underscore C E one. There you go. And I am Graphics Penando Vlogs. Um, another uh, place where you can find this podcast is um, for video. You're going to see it in my channel, uh, my YouTube channel, which is Graphics Penando Vlogs on YouTube. You could also see it on my link tree and Instagram, which is my same Instagram, is the same name on Graphics Penando Vlogs. Um, I will also tag them for today's episode. Um, the voice, like always, you guys will hear it in the morning on uh, Anchor and uh, Spotify. Uh, I still haven't worked out how to get it on Apple Music or Amazon yet, but um, I am getting to that, guys. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but other than that, let's uh, start this podcast. So, Alejandro, um, well, I want to start off with uh, with you. Like, like, what is it that uh, what made you come up? uh to start this business like uh what brought you to php yeah so so before i go into like more of, of the company and you know what made me go into the, start that business it was more of the mindset mm -hmm. so my, my parents are my dad's like a five foot four short little dark mexican you know what i mean mm -hmm. like 50 shades of gray uh <laughs> and uh, my dad my dad's a really little just a little hispanic man and you know and um this guy was just a go-getter and and the reason why um, it stuck to me to do something being born in this country was because you know, when my dad jumped the border, he used to always tell me when I was like a little kid, hey, if I can come to this country, open up a restaurant, he used to have, uh, have a restaurant called Jacarito in Lamont. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, at one time, he was the first Mexican born in Mexico to open up a Mexican restaurant in Kern County. Wow. So, yeah, so most of the people born in, 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 uh, in like, like us, like we're born here, uh -huh. but our parents are born in Mexico. A lot of them had to open up Mexican restaurants, but they were like, or they're born already in America, the ones that started it. Mm -hmm. My dad was the first paisano, like straight, you know, from Mexico, sin papeles, with no English, mm -hmm. you know, open up a Mexican restaurant. And then it came out on Times Magazine too. And oh, so, wow. yeah, man. So like without knowing, like him not knowing, or he came he, with that mindset, like, he, oh, he, I he, he knew when, when he was working at, a, there's a restaurant called Torito. You know, it was mm -hmm. pretty, uh, there was a training yeah. restaurant called Torito back in the day. And, uh, and uh, so he moved, he went from a bus boy, you know, he even went from washing dishes to the kitchen prep to then eventually the the cook and then okay. he went from there to being a busboy. So he went from a cook to a busboy. Oh wow. Then from busboy to waiter and then from there to bartender and then they asked him for a manager position. He's like, I'm not here to manage a restaurant. I'm here to open up a restaurant. Wow. You know what I mean? So Saludos al papá de Alex. Uh, yeah, Salomon, <laughs> right? Shout out to my dad. And, ¿Cómo se llama uh, tu papá? Salomon. Like, like King Saludos. Salomon, right? King Salomon yes, Aguilar, sir. man. So then my dad, uh, little short, little dark Mexican man, no English. He's always say, mijo, you know, and we used to go to Mexico. We, we're from Michoacán, right? So we used to drive to Michoacán, and it's a, a three-day drive. So it would be me and my brother, Ricardo Aguilar. If you guys don't know my brother, Ricardo, uh, Ricardo TCO, he's one of the craziest guys I've ever met. Not just because he's my brother, but he's wild, right? Yeah. And uh, but he's an entrepreneur as well, very successful. And uh, it's funny because we used to drive to Mexico, and this is so important about programming kids because – 
you know, the human brain is wired from age four to 17 years old. Psychologically, yes. that's, you know, how you, how you wire a human brain is from age four to 17. Mm -hmm. So what you see growing up, what you, what you see or you experience growing up from, four, from age four to 17, it programs I mean, as an adult, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember going to, going to Mexico and this three-day drive, and my dad would be driving, right? He used to drive to Mexico, and he says, you see that man? It was a construction worker. You see that man? I'm like, yeah, if he can do it, you can do it faster and better than him. And I'm like, and anything, bro, he used to point at any type of law. If you can do it, you can do it faster better than him. You just have to outwork him. So the, so the, the concept of outworking mm -hmm. stayed with me more than anything. Oh. So my dad in school in Mexico, you know, when you're, when you're not doing good in school, uh -huh. they put a cone in your head. Burro. I don't know if you guys yeah. heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Parents, yeah. Right? I so, think I got it once. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so, so in Mexico, bro, they put in el burro, right? So my dad, my dad, they held my, my dad was like 12 years old, bro, still in like in the second grade. So my dad didn't go to the third grade. Because oh, my dad yeah. just kept on holding him back. So my dad was never book smart. Mm -hmm. But he had that work ethic, which got on my head. So mm -hmm. in his head, the imprinted mindset of life was like, hey, man, you don't have to be all book smart. My dad doesn't really know how to spell, how to write too well. But he's like, he just, he's just a worker. So, mm -hmm. so that stuck to me as well. So growing up, my dad had a dealership. And, uh, you know, it was just me and my brother. He was, he was, there was the dealership in Lamont had a, like, you know, sometimes there's trash in a parking lot. He'd be like, go pick up the trash, right? And then go do this. And I'm like, all right, dad, I picked up the trash. I was like four or five. I was like, nope, I see more paper over there, right? Yeah. So then, so my dad was like super hardcore, bro, hardcore Christian as well. We grew up as Jehovah Witnesses too. So I kind of drifted away. I came back a few years later. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it was funny because like um, my dad was such a hardcore like work ethic. Like I remember being in school, bro. And, and, and I don't know if you guys remember, but real estate was booming back in 2001, yeah. 1995. 1996 so everybody started getting into the real estate market well my dad started buying houses mm -hmm. fixing them and then selling them but not him he'd be cleaning a suit and he had his all little construction workers right to like remodel the house and fix it, and then he would sell it okay. bro, he used to pick me up from school and then he'd be like all right i was in my uniform still he'd be like all right um go help the workers i'm like dad i got homework he's like you are home and you're gonna do work that's homework i'm like <laughs> damn bro. Uh, <laughs> so, bro i never had good grades my dad didn't care about d's f's he didn't he can care less all he cared wow. about was that me and my brother would work hard. Mm -hmm. And so, so you know, whenever you're in school, bro, and they tell you, go to school, get good grades, get a good job, and you live the American dream. Mm -hmm. My dad didn't understand that because, see, the, the fact that he said he's always make fun of, like, different nationalities that were born here. He'd be like, look at those gringos over there, man. You see? They're born <laughs> in this country, bro, and they still working for somebody else. Like, when do you ever see me call somebody a boss? I'm the boss, right? And <laughs> show a little dark Mexican. And, and so that always stays in my head, like, if, if you're gonna, if, if we didn't come to America, he said, Look, mijo, I didn't jump the border and sacrifice my life and leave our parents and leave our brothers and sisters and leave our family and leave our rancho to our, the established life that we have to come to America and do nothing. Mm -hmm. We came for a purpose, we came to do something, you know. So, so when that's when you're hearing that your whole entire life, like, oh, you know what, you better do something, you better, you know, uh, start your own business. And my dad said, I remember we used to go to Guanajuato, right? And on Salas Momia, it's real beautiful, man. Guanajuato's beautiful. Oh, yeah, seen that, seen that yeah, bro. On TV. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it's, Guanajuato. the, Guanajuato's beautiful because it was colonized by the Spaniards. Uh, oh, um, you know, before, like, you know, there's like those indigenous and all of that. So it was colonized by the Spaniards. So that's kind of like where they established their cities and whatnot before, you know, before they had the, the independence from Spain. And so what, what, what ended up happening, bro, was that my dad used to take us to Guanajuato. And then um, there's some, like, little kids right there. So a lot of the people are so poor in Guanajuato, los indígenas, that they kind of abandoned their kids. Uh -huh. So what happens is now the kids, they learn the story or the history of all Guanajuato. So they take you, mean that building at one point was this and this and that. So they'll tell you stories. So what my dad would do is that it was me and my brother. He would pick up a kid. And in our car, we would drive all over Guanajuato, and he would give us, like, the story of all Guanajuato, which was sick. You know, like, like a, a tour. Yeah. Like a tour, tour bro. Yeah, yeah. 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 So these kids are living in the street, bro. So my dad's yeah. like, you see those kids? I'm like, yeah. He goes, this is the reason I work hard. I work so hard because I want to make sure that you guys can experience this and never live like these kids. Mm -hmm. That's why I work so hard. So I always knew that even though my dad worked on the average man, you know, my dad worked on Sundays. My dad would work, you know, sometimes till 1 o'clock in the morning, bro. He had us at 11 o'clock at night, bro. In Mercado Latino, he saw have a, a restaurant called El Puerto, and yeah. we're peeling shrimp. You know what I mean? 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but for me, it was normal because I knew that we'd be busting ass, mm -hmm. but we were going to go to Puerto Vallarta. Uh -huh. We're going to go to Huatulco, Acapulco, uh -huh. Oaxaca, Mexico, Defen, Las Pirámides. You know what I mean? 
uh, so to go to Michoacan, go to Jalisco, go to Guadalajara, you know, go to Universal Studios, go to Six Flags. There was always a reward. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like my dad would sit there and play with us 24-7. Yeah. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it was more like he would he would give us a lot of experiences. Like people sometimes they say, I want to work hard, give my kids everything. That, my dad was mindset wasn't so much like that. My dad wanted to give us a lot of experiences. Mm -hmm. So for me, growing up, I always said to myself, I remember that my uncles, it was so funny because my uncles were like, my uncles were a little bit, they're cool, man, they're good, but you know, Hispanic family, bro, they always got something to say. Yeah. And uh, so out of all the brothers, like they're all like, most of our entrepreneurs, but they would give my dad a hard time because he was the most like driven one out of all of them. And um, they'll be like, oh, your dad said, I'm going to need farto because he works so much. Your dad stresses so much on money, that this and this and that. But with my dad, my dad traveled more than they did. My dad gave us more experiences than my cousins. So that was his stress reliever. Yeah, like that was that was his thing. That's what that's he lived for. That's a way to do it. Yeah, he worked to Love give us experiences. Him. And so I remember when I was six years old, bro, I told my dad, I was like, I was like, dad, when I get older, I'm going to retire you. I'm going to buy you a big old house and I'm going to buy a land where my house is going to be right next to you. So I remember telling this promise to my dad when I was six. But guys, I'm a DNF student. Like, if you put me right out of the divide, bro, I'm like, where's my calculator? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to spell. I don't know the difference between there, there, and there. I'm like, why is there so many there's? You know what I mean? Two, 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 and two. Like, what, what are you talking about? Right? So so I never really well, I originally to, studied that, too. Yeah, like, like, I just well, wanted to my, make sure I got the My third-year-old knows yeah. that already. Yeah, bro. I was like, <laughs> I don't. funny you say bro, that. If you told me my ABCs, like, I'm like, elemental P. Like, I make it up like a song because I don't know how to just say my ABCs. I still don't, bro. And. So being in the school, man, being a DNF student, you know, it's so funny, bro, because it programs you so, mm -hmm. like, it mm -hmm. typically, like, it programs you so bad to think that if you don't have good grades and you don't get a good job and you don't go to school, you're not going to amount to anything. And I think that's horseshit. She's my friend, so I don't know if I no, can. You know? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Be yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that's that's BS because you're tip, you're wiring a kid. Look, I'm, like, again, the kids are in school from 5 to 17. The time that the kids are being wired in their human brain to have a sense of belief of who they are, and it wires them to believe who they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're called stupid, your whole entire life from age five, bro, to age 17, with tutors and teachers making fun of you and other kids calling you dumb because you can't keep up with the rest, mm -hmm. you know what that does, bro? Like, it creates a self uh, of insecurity. Mm -hmm. exactly. And then when you feel insecure, then anxiety comes with it. Mm -hmm. And then with anxiety comes depression. So, so what people don't really realize is that the school system has really screwed up a lot of people to make them believe that they're not smart because they don't have memory retention, which is the lowest level of intelligence that there is. Mm -hmm. People think that intelligence is having a, a, B's and C's. That's, that's not true. That is a level of intelligence because that's memory retention, but that is not the highest level of intelligence. There's emotional intelligence. There's spiritual intelligence. There's human intelligence. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different, like the, there's four different types of intelligence and, and memory retention is the lowest one. Mm -hmm. So for people to base their life on who they are at the lowest level of memory retention that there is really screws up people's outcome. Um, or like their perspective of life, who, who mm -hmm. they can become. And motivation. Of course. To reach their goals. Because you start thinking to yourself, like, I'm not going to go to school. I might as well what? Settle. Yeah. Pretty as good. long as I can get something I can get by, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, this is good. Yeah, perfect example on some kids that don't graduate. They just give up. They do. Mm -hmm. They give up instead of pushing through. Yeah. That's and, very true. And, and that's, that's where I had, I had this crusade of like, I'm going to be somebody. I just don't know how or where. So, do you guys remember what happened to the economy in 2008? Mm -hmm. Remember in 2008 that the real estate market crashed? It crashed, yeah. Oh, okay. So, the market crash is terrible. Bro. That's when all kinds of houses were forked. Everybody, bro, yeah. was losing houses yeah. in 2008. Yes. Everybody, real estate market crashed. Everything started crashing, bro. My parents, my stepdad, and my mom had a business. And then uh, they lost it as well in 2008. My dad, uh, by 2006, the bank stopped giving loans and my dad was in real estate. So, therefore... He couldn't actually get, sell no more houses or couldn't move no more. Like, he couldn't have no more, uh, move any houses no more. So, everything started crumbling down. I'm about 17 when I'm starting to experience this. And then 2008, it really just takes a toll. The market lost 38% of the stock market, right? I mean, bro, if you, that's that's like having a million dollars and you lose 380000 to give it a perspective on how bad people lost their wealth. You get me? Mm -hmm. And then taxes, imagine. So, what ends up happening, bro, is that the market's crashing. Everybody's losing everything. And then um, I said, damn, well... I thought I was going to go run a business with my parents. Like, yeah, I'm going to leave my bro. Because like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to go to college. So I'm like, damn, well, what am I going to do now? And so the best thing ever happened to me. Um, have you guys ever heard like the saying uh, with, uh, with, that you have to go through a level of pain or you have to go through 
things in life to put you down before you can build up. Yes, I yeah. heard like that. Like a storm, like, a calm before the storm, something like that? Well, or it's kind of like yeah. something like that, that has to build like your character. Has, something has to make you, like, imagine a kid who lives with mom and dad and he lives in a bubble his whole life and parents pay for his house and this and that. Well, a lot of these kids, they grow up, bro, and they become extremely dependent on people because, and they expect for the world to cater to them because mommy yeah. and daddy did that. It's expected. Them, right? Mm-hmm. So I remember in 2000, so I have an older brother, just me and Ricky, and Ricky's like, he's always been a big guy. He's strong, physically strong. He's just a monster, bro. And so <laughs> I grew up like finding a grizzly bear pretty much, right? So so then Ricky, Ricky was always like my protector, right? And then my dad was very protective with me as well, and so was my mom. I was the youngest. Mm-hmm. So, but my dad takes off to Mexico, goes, lives out there when the market crashes. My mom gets remarried. My stepdad's like, he doesn't have kids, so he doesn't know how to have that tender passion. Like, it's okay, mijo, which is good, because I needed that. And then my brother takes off when I'm, like, 15. He doesn't come back. He moves. He goes into, like, the, the gang life, you know? Mm-hmm. So, he takes off. And then I saw him there by myself. So, I'm 18, bro, and I go to the oil rigs. And I walk into the oil rigs like a little little lamb, bro, like a little peach, you know what I mean? Walk in there. And I'm like, good morning, right? And they're like, who the F are you, right? First oh, is this when it was really bad? Oh, yeah. This yeah. is like when the oil rigs was like, like uh, they call it old school. When they used to do the oil rigs, school, old school. So I walk into the oil rigs, man, the first day. These guys are monsters, bro. So I did roofing construction all through high school. So I had a work ethic in me. Yeah. But what I didn't have is I didn't have the balls. Like, I didn't have no balls, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I was tough. I can, I can probably throw hands. I just, I grew up in a household where if, if you talk to a bat to an adult, you get smacked. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you, I don't know if you guys grew up like that. Like, like, you come back like to the dog, oh, yeah. you're going to get smacked. So these guys were older than me. So I, they were just immediately disrespecting me. And I was already programmed to be like, well, you don't say anything, bro, because they're elder. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So yeah. I go to the rigs. These fools are monsters. Like, they're extremely disrespectful. There's a guy named Jose Chacon. Guy changed my life forever. He was my rig coach. And then I had my operator. His name is Jose Valencia. Mm-hmm. And then another punk guy named Louie, right? The guy, I still call him a punk because he was a punk. Um, we made that guy <laughs> Shout cool. out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> shout out to the punk Louie, right? Um, you know who you are. And so, uh, but anyways, so then uh, I go to the rigs. Man, these guys are punking me, bro. So I used to lift a lot of weights in high school. So I'm like 210. You know, I'm, I'm pretty stout. I'm 19 years old, 20 years old. So I think I'm strong, right? These guys are like five foot six, five foot five. Beer bellies, bro. And they're like, go pick that up. And I, and I would try to pick it up, man. And I couldn't do it. I'm like, damn, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. And then Jose Valencia comes, pushes me, he's like, move. And he calls me the B word, picks it up, picks up the something like something from the rig, like nothing, bro. I'm like, what the? Oh, These fools were like shorter than me, beer bellies. And <laughs> they were way stronger than me. I was like, what? I was tripped out, bro. So these guys were. They put me through depression, man, for four yeah. Like, they're cussing me out all day long from morning I've heard. to night. Oh, like every that. name you can find of an insult in Spanish and English. These fools were bilingual, man. So I got like doubly <laughs> insulted, right? <laughs> and so so these guys were just like, man. Double was, disrespect. Yeah, double disrespect. <laughs> like, and, and then there were engineers that would come down from like the engineers to like look at the wells and whatnot. And then they would do it intentionally, like even disrespect me even more wow. just to give them a kick. You know what I mean? So, so you had like, it back because I worked in the oil fields too for a bit. Yeah. And I don't think I had it that bad. Oh, bro. No. These fools were like, but they had a saying, like they said that their job, they told me like, my job here is to make you quit. That's what they told me. Damn. And so I was just like, all right, well, I grew up with Ricky Aguilar too, so they don't know that side, mm-hmm. right? Well, I grew up with an older brother who was a straight bully, you know? So so um, I was just taking it, bro. And then I remember after four months, I went from 210 pounds of muscle to 173 pounds of bone of depression, bro. I used to hear these guys in my sleep. Like, mm-hmm. these guys literally scarred me. And I remember one day, you guys ever heard the show called Tolim por la Mañana? Sí. Yeah, you guys I are putting it on that. So, so when I used to go to the rigs, I used to be driving right up to the rigs, and then uh, it was putting for la mañana, and when they, they, they would do a lot of Let me calls. find out you were listening to Reflexiones. Uh, I would be listening to everybody, <laughs> bro. I would just be listening to I was listening to putting for la mañana. And so it was funny because I'm driving one day, and uh, the day before I'm listening to this broadcast that they were doing, that's why I think broadcasts are so damn important because mm-hmm. they impact people's lives in such a way that you don't even know. Especially like, when you're depressed and you're at your lowest. Oh, you need that motivation sometimes. Yeah. Driving to work or yes. you're you're mad because you just got dumped and then they start talking about it and you're like, hey, you know. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah some it's weird switches. how it works. Yeah. 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 So it was funny. It's so funny that you say that because the the day the day before I'm listening to Primilen por la Mañana in the morning, um, one day I mess up on the paperwork and I'm like, and they're like, you know what? And they start cussing at me this time. And they're like, you know what? You, you're you worth this, man. You're freaking worth this. We're going to call a dispatcher. We're going to have them fire your ass because you suck. You're worth this. You're a piece of this, this, and that. And they're just, and I'm just like, bro. And I, you know, have you guys ever tried crying and talking at the same time? 
Don't yeah. do it. It sounds stupid, bro. Yeah, right? So there I am trying to cry and talk. A ver, a ver, like, show us out, show us out. Try to cry. So, a ver, un little, right? little test, a ver. Taste, right? <laughs> so I'm like crying and trying to talk, like trying to explain to this. Was like, dude, you, I do everything you guys tell me to do. If you got something, I just, I run. I don't even walk. Call me like, and I'm trying to like. Are you talk. going like this? Like, like, <laughs> ser- like almost, man. I'm trying to hold right? back my tears with all these rig workers, man. Oh my God, I've And heard. these fools are just like, and I'm just like, look, man, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm literally now. Going through like, you know, they say make you or break you. They're literally, they're breaking me. And I'm just like, dude, I'm trying. And then all of a sudden he looks at one of my coworkers and he's like, Louie, he's like, where do you leave your feelings at? He goes, you leave that shit at home. He's like, there is no feelings here. And the guy grabs me and slams me to the rig. It looks like a big fireman truck. He slams me and he's like, listen, this is a dog and dog world. He goes, nobody gives a fuck about your feelings. And he goes, look, if you, if you can't take this man, this man work, go out there and flip burgers at McDonald's. He's like, get your ass out of here. If you can't take it, this is a man's world. And nobody gives a damn how you feel. Nobody gives a damn about your mom. Nobody gives a damn. If somebody tells you F you, you better tell them F you right back. And start with this whole excuse me, please, and thank you BS, right? Mm-hmm. And because I was very polite, man. I grew up with like mm-hmm. Hispanic parents. So, so. Bro, when this guy slammed me and he gave me a reality check, he's like, he's like, stop being up. He's like, let your balls drop. And I'm just like, be a effing man. And when he told me that, bro, I remember just being stunned because I'm like, I, I, I need to, I need to man up. Now, How I'm old a, were you? I was probably 20. Oh, okay. I was oh, 20. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. so he slams me into the rig and he does that, bro. And, and it was a, it was a brutal reality call because I was, I was literally these fools doormats. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was their doormat. Mm-hmm. And how many people in life are a doormat? Mm-hmm. How many people don't stick up for themselves? How many people don't stop? Okay. Like a lot. A oh, lot. Yeah. They get taken advantage. Of mm-hmm. course. They get abused for them not standing up for, for themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I'm just sitting there like, damn. And I started go like I had like a minor flashback of everything that's happened to me, even at my old job when I was a waiter at a, at a restaurant called Red Pepper or a server, I'm, so, I'm sorry, a busboy in ISU. I was supposed to get off at a certain time, but I, other people used to take off earlier because I was new and I wouldn't say anything. Mm-hmm. I just kind of would just stay behind later mm-hmm. and, and do their work as well. Like all this crap, bro, that I would just. Started, all, it started coming back. Like, huh? like thinking like, dude, he's right. Yeah. So that day, make it callado, bro. I didn't even say nothing. Right. So I'm just, all right, I'm just working. These fools are still cussing at me. The next day I go inside my truck. I'm going to the mine. It's probably about five in the morning. I'm driving toward, towards uh, Taft and where the, where the oil uh, rigs are at. And so I'm driving there and building, but my comes out. Mm-hmm. All right, and this is my game changer completely, man. I'm so grateful for Pelin Pela Mañana, bro. Saludos, Pelin. Saludos, Pelin, man. Yeah, so I, t- I had a chance to talk to him, too, Pelin, and tell oh, him my wow. story. Yeah, man, I had a chance to talk to him. That's and let awesome. Him know, learn my story as well, which was tight. And um, what ended up happening, bro, was like, uh, so I'm, I'm in the morning, and Pelin Pela Mañana used to have different people for broadcasters. Like, he used to bring people who do taxes, people who help people with immigration. Mm-hmm. Um, he would also be entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. artists, you know, like... He's this. always been open mm-hmm. to help people out. Yeah, it's always, man. So That's he had like, a variety yeah. of different yeah. speakers, right? And so one time they bring an entrepreneur and they said, so how did you make it? Mm-hmm. And then he was all like, you know what? He goes, I was in sales, right? He goes, I was like working at retail. Mm-hmm. And he goes, and there was one guy who was spanking everybody in retail. Like he was just beating everybody and he would win all kinds of awards and trips and this and that and bonuses. And he was just spanking on everybody. He goes, what happened? He goes, well, eventually I got sick of it. He goes, and? He goes, well, I said, you know what? I'm going to beat him. And then it was, and he's like, I started telling myself every day of every second of every moment of all day that I was going to beat him. He's like, so did you beat him? He's like, no, but I beat my prior best. He goes, okay. He goes, what happened? He goes, the next one. I start telling myself every day, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. He's like, every second of every moment of every day, I'm like, I'm going to beat him. 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 He goes, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm going to beat him. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm going to beat him. So affirmations, he was telling himself. Now, I don't know what that word affirmations meant at the time, but I'm just listening to this broadcast. Can you explain what, it, what Affirmations, yeah. It's like you affirming to yourself. And speaking to yourself where nobody else can hear you. And you, you could be in the mirror. You could be thinking to yourself, like, I'm the best. I'm the wolf. I'm the boss. Like, I'm, I'm the best. Now, people might think, like, that's being cocky. No, you have no. to tell yourself that. Because there's a thousand negative thoughts. Per, for every, like, 10 to 20 good thoughts you have, there's about a thousand negative thoughts. Mm-hmm. So exactly. as you're telling yourself I'm the best, you're just a, you're you are convincing yourself and wiring yourself to believe that you're badass. Yeah. Right. As you should. You know what I mean? Because everybody can be badass, but a lot of people don't have that belief, yeah. mm-hmm. especially their wiring. Growing up in a Hispanic household, oh, I clean the kitchen. Mom, I clean my room. 
¿Y la cocina qué? ¿Se va a limpiar sola? Like, nothing's ever good enough, bro. You know what I mean? So like, nothing's ever good so a lot of times. O te faltó ahí en la esquinita. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's always like nothing's ever yeah. good, bro. So we're wired to think that nothing's ever good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then um, I'm listening to this guy. He's like, I'm, he's like, I'm the best. He's like, what happened? He's like, the next month, I'd be my prior best again. He goes, finally, after a few months, I finally beat him. And then I surpassed him. And I started taking all the bonuses and all the trips and all this and all that. It's like, I just started becoming the best. He goes, and then eventually I started my own company. And now he's like, and now you're a multimillionaire. He's like, and now I'm a multimillionaire. And I'm, so I'm 21 years old, bro, 20 years old. And I'm listening to the, I'm in like a beat up ass little truck, driving up to the rig. And I, like the day before of me getting checked, that had just happened. Uh -huh. So that morning, the next morning, I'm like driving up to the mountain when the sun's not even up. I'm like, I'm the best. I'm the best. Trying <laughs> to like, like convince myself, bro. And then that day I show up, yeah, man. That day I show up. Yeah, bro. That was weird, bro. I'm like, I'm the best. Right? Like, like really trying to. Like, yeah, bro. Like I was like, I'm the best. I'm the best. Because I was so desperate. I was so yeah. low. You know, I'm like, dude, I'm the best. So that day I show up. And then uh, and they're like, they're like every morning they would disrespect me, like what's up, little. And this time they're like, what's up, mother? I'm like, what's up, right? Like, and they're like, what? And because I would never talk back, bro. Yeah. They're like, what? And then and then they're like, all right, we're gonna get you out when we get to location, right? Hello, you got He's like, what's up, warm? I'm like, what's up, mother? Effort. And then he's all like, what'd you say? And they could not believe it. I was finally standing up for myself, I was like damn right, you know. It's like your little brother sister finally exactly. stands up for themselves. Yeah. So hey, let me was, find out you were taller than uh, them. Oh, no, I was. <laughs> I'm 6'1". These guys like, are like, so these guys were just like, we're going to whoop your ass when we get to location. What they didn't know is I grew with Ricky, you know? So yeah. sure enough, we get to location. They're trying to hit me, punch me. We're, they're horse. It's like, have you guys ever like fought with your older brother where you guys are punching, playing, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like getting pretty aggressive. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you also know you can't go too extreme, but you know you're getting aggressive. <laughs> so bro, I'm fighting Jose Chacon. I'm house fighting Jose Valencia. Louis gets in there, but I dropped Louis' ass right away. So I'm literally fighting Jose Valencia and Jose Chacon to my, my operator and my relief opera at the same like time. Physically? Like, yeah, yeah, oh, but we're damn. not like yeah, punching each other in the way. face, but we're like wrestling, boxing okay. each other. I'm literally fighting both of them off. And after a while, they're like, we're bleeding. We're like, all right, they're like, we're good. Like, all right, let's go to work. So I, I feel like I got jumped in, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it was cool, oh, man, because oh, after man. that day, bro, I was like, after that day, uh, that was like my fourth month into the biz, into the, to the, to the oil rigs. Um, Four months later, so that day on, bro, they were cussing me. I'm like, let's go, man. So then instead of me, so have you guys ever tried working under pressure? People are screaming at you, screaming at you, and you're like, you can't even think. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? You're like, shut the fuck up. You're right, and you like defend yourself, and you're like screaming back at them. You feel confident in what you're doing because like you're zoning into what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So these guys were cussing at me. I would cuss and rap back at them too. I'm not advising people to cuss back. I'm just saying like, <laughs> this is like, the environment I was in, yeah, you know? Yeah, that was the environment I was in. Yeah, I was, that was the environment I was in. So then I that was- the language there. Yeah, Please don't be, don't be talking back while I'm getting my Starbucks drink. Yeah, they're, they're, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't apply, right? <laughs> so then, uh, so then you know, for me, it's like, so I started, I really started defending myself. And then from that point moving forward, I was, I became a boss. I was like, I was 20 years old and I just started, Telling people, with opera. I remember there was a guy named, uh, we called him Turtle. He was cool, man. But he would move slow, so we called him Turtle. And I remember, uh -huh. I, it got to the extreme when I was like, hey, man, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, do you know what happens to horses that break a leg? And they're like, no. I'm like, they put them down. You want to know why? And they're like, why? Because they're worthless. I'm like, that's the way you work. You're worthless. I would start being like that. That mm -hmm. cutthroat with older men, bro, where it went from like super respectful to like move your ass if not, I'm going to call you how it is. Yeah. And so that right there, made me move up fast. I got a position that takes two years to get, and I got it in eight months. Wow. Yeah. So four months later, bro, I got it, you know? And um, I just started scaling, bro. I got, I got, and they actually recruited me to go to another oil field company. They started paying me more money, gave me my schedule. I told them, I said, look, man, I'm, the only way I'm coming is if I work Monday through Saturday, I'm Monday through Friday, and I don't work weekends. That's the only way I'm going to come to this company. And they're like, and then they're like, so you guys think about it. And I took off from the interview. They called me back. They're like, come back. They're like, yeah, we'll give you that job. Wow. I was like, cool. So finally, when you when you know your worth and you become badass at what mm -hmm. you do, you you set the standards and expectations. Oh, yeah. So I was 23 years old, man. I got in a car accident uh, right here in front of Double Tree Hotel on Rosedale, right here in Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. I got in this car accident, messed my back. My back was already no bueno just for many years of working construction. You know, my dad used to make me work construction since I was nine. I did roofing through high school on my own as well. Now oil fields, bro. So I just, I was like a 50-year-old man's back, you know, by the time mm -hmm. I'm like 23. So I get in this car accident messes on my back and I'm going through physical therapy for like six months. Oh, 
And so then I've always wanted to have a business, bro. Like, it's always crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to clock in, clock out forever, ever. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want somebody to tell me what I'm worth for every hour, every day, every month, every year, forever, ever. Like, mm -hmm. hell no. Like, Or bro. you're trying to eat your burger, like, really fast because... Yeah, because you're on your lunch break, yeah, bro. You know what I mean? I like, like to enjoy my... Right, my like, like or show up in the mornings. Imagine, like, damn, I'm going to get a ride up if I yes. show up late. Like, I can't even stop and get a coffee, you yeah. know, because... Right? I, I don't want to live life like that, not forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, there has to... There's no way in hell my parents jumped the border for me to come to America... Be working the oil fields. I don't give a damn if they supposed to get paid good money. Because I thought good money was four, five, six grand a month. I thought that was good money. Mm -hmm. Because for me, that's like, well, everybody else that I know makes two, three grand a month. Mm -hmm. Making four, five grand a month as a 22-year-old kid, that's good money. Mm -hmm. But I realized, like, bro, I can barely make it. No me alcanzaba. How I can, I had a girlfriend who was expensive. Like, I can barely support her ass. Imagine she gets pregnant. Like ya valimos madre. You yeah. know because like yeah. we can barely make it with just me and her. And and uh, and I wasn't even living with her, bro. And I was living. I was renting a room off my brother's condo. So I'm like, dude, I have a Dodge Charger. I can barely afford myself. I'm making four, five grand, six grand a month. It's still not enough. Yeah. And then to save money. And then and I still always think about my parents. Like, bro, they're getting older mm -hmm. and they're Hispanic and nobody ever teaches them nothing about money. See, in the, in the Mexican culture, bro, if you talk about money, it's falta respeto. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Si de la muerte, cállate, wey, porque me echa la sal. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's like, so we don't prepare for these things. So as our parents are getting older, my dad is always telling me, like, you go, what I don't understand is, like, back then, two parents can take care of 14 kids, but today, 14 kids can't even take care of their own parents. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was like, it was like, that's disrespectful. And I heard this all my life as disrespectful for the kids not to take care of their parents. Mm -hmm. I heard that as a kid. So now when I was 21, 22, two, and, my, and I was thinking to myself, like, if I stay here, bro, I can never do nothing for my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. I can do nothing. How am I going to retire my dad like I promised? How am I always going to buy him a house like I promised? How is this going to take place? You barely could do it for yourself. Bro, mm -hmm. imagine. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm thinking to myself, like, there has to be a better way. So I, for the people listening to the broadcast, that's why it's so important for you to keep your options open in life. Anything that you might think can be an opportunity for you to succeed, even if there's a 10% chance or a 5% chance, take that effing chance. That okay. risk. Because you don't, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't get you successful, you know what it does? It puts you, it puts you, prepar it pre prepares you, makes you better, it gives you experience, it's teaching you something. Not mm -hmm. just because it pays you, it, even if it doesn't give you financial reward right away, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There's kids in school for four years who don't get paid crap. Mm -hmm. For four years, bro. And then they get a job and can't find a degree. They can't find a job with their degree. Mm -hmm. And then they eventually find, stumble into a job that eventually is not probably not their degree, but the, the job probably hired them just because they had a degree. And now they're doing a completely different mm -hmm. uh, industry than what they went to school for, but they're making six figures. So why? Because, because at least it prepares them. So any opportunity you can take, you have to take it. Yeah. I don't care if it's selling freaking vacuum cleaners, bro, or selling Tupperware, or 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 selling damn tamales, bro. You feel me? Yeah. Like, if it's an opportunity, you got to take it and you got to do it. Oh, yeah. So when I was 23, bro, I got in this car accident. I hurt my back. I'm going through physical therapy, and I'm, I'm going through depression, bro, because my car's getting repossessed. Now I'm struggling. I'm on disability. And my income's like half of it. You don't have, once you leave, you get hurt after 90 days, you lose all your benefits from work, mm -hmm. right? They're called group life, group life insurance, group health insurance. You lose all your group yeah. benefits. So after 90 days, bro, I'm like, dude, I, I need to go back to the rigs. And my mom's like, mijo, your back is no bueno. You can't go back. I'm like, mom, I'm an oil field worker. That's as good as it gets for a guy like me. So you remember the whole schooling yeah. crap? So then I had belief in my work ethic. I didn't have belief in my potential, though. Mm -hmm. You get me? So then, so my mom's like, mijo, there's a company looking for people, bro. And I'm like, well, what is it? She's like, it's Obamacare. We don't do Obamacare. I don't know why the hell my mom even said that, right? <laughs> we show up, bro, a bunch of white people in their 50s and 60s. I'm a Latino, bro. I'm all sleeved up, full of tattoos. <laughs> so I'm just like, every other set, there was like the F bomb, you're coming straight fresh out of the oil fields, you know, chef off the boat. And so then I'm just like, I see all these white people in their 50s and 60s. I'm like, small ass office. And I'm just like, I'm like, mom, what the hell is this, right? You're literally that, the youngest one there? Bro, I'm one of the youngest ones there, bro. Oh and, from other, and so I'm like, everybody's dressed in suits and ties. I'm all sleeved up, tatted up, oil for worker walked in. And they're like, and, they're, and one of the, they're like introducing me to people. And then there was a lady that comes up to me. Her name's Erica del Toro. So mm -hmm. Erica's like, oh, my mom's like, oh, ma, mijo, this is Erica, the one I was telling you that came from LA. And I'm like, ma'am, if you guys don't pay more than five grand a month, I'm not interested. I straight up told her like that. <laughs> and she's like, she starts chuckling in my face. She's like, ay, mijo, I used to make a quarter million dollars a year in real estate. There's a reason why I'm here. I'm like, damn. Now, <laughs> now we're talking. They just shut the hell up, right? Yeah. And I'm like, so they put me to this little ass room, bro. The office was not even big. It was small. It was sketchy, bro. And I'm just like, 
whatever. And I see this presentation. The first thing they started talking about was entrepreneurship, man. What do you think came to my mind? Hell yeah. Like, yeah. be your own boss. That's what I'm talking about. I've always wanted to have my own business. I'm like, yes, man. Bro, when I was in high school, I used to tell, like, the girl, like, my ex-girlfriend was so freaking, uh, what is it called? Such a, uh, it's a certain word. I, I was such a, like, I was such a, like, uh, obsessed with my girl that I would want to tell her, like, hey, man, let me tell you why we shouldn't break up. And she'd be like, why? I'm like, because if we break up, one day I'm going to get older. I'm going to become successful. I'm going to travel all over the world. I'm going to have a beautiful wife with beautiful kids, and we're going to have a badass life. Yeah. And so if you break up with me, you're just going to have to watch me instead of being with me. So, you know, narcissist straight up. <laughs> yeah. but, not, but only a narcissist is not true. If yeah. it's not true, it's a narcissist. Yeah, that is true. Wow. If, if it's, like, legit and it's real, then you're the boss. That yeah. was a boss-ass yeah. statement. Yeah. So I remember thinking to myself, like, I've always told that to, like, the girl I was dating, right, and her, you know, shout out to my ex girlfriend in high school, you know, because <laughs> I remember telling her that, like, that's what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm gonna become, I'm gonna have a badass whip, I'm gonna have a good life. And so I'm like, that's why we can't break up because I loved her so much, you know, so I'm like <laughs> trying to sell her the dream of the picture of the life <laughs> we're gonna have, right? But so I remember watching this presentation, they were talking about entrepreneurship, but like, damn, I don't have enough money to start, I don't have good credit score, I don't have savings like that. My dad was in Mexico, so I don't have a mentor or a coach. And these people were touching about business. I was like, okay, first thing, I like it. The second thing they talked about was life insurance. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, in this broadcast, I want you guys to think why I've always believed that life insurance was important because I always said to myself, like, okay, my parent, mom, dad jumped aboard to come to America. They build their family. They build me. They raise me. They sacrifice. They do everything, right? If you guys have kids, you guys have kids? Mm -hmm. So you know how at night they, like, <laughs> they wake up, they, they have the flu, if they throw up or if they piss, they crap, they throw up, you, mm -hmm. you got to do it. That's, mm -hmm. So I just imagine like how much our parents sacrifice for us. Mm -hmm. So if we were to die, either two things, either we're an asset or a liability, right? Mm -hmm. So if you die, how much is a funeral? 16 grand. Mm -hmm. We die, parents cough up 16 grand, they get older, nobody takes care of them. Mm -hmm. The dirt, bro. That's that's terrible. Reality, yeah. That's reality. Yeah. But if you die, you leave behind half a million dollars. Your funeral's paid for, and you left mom, dad, money to either buy a house, retire, or travel. So at 19, bro, I purchased my own life insurance policy of half a million dollars. I remember, bro, when I was already like dating girls, I'm like, let me tell you, I'm a good catch, and she's like, why? I'm like, because I have a half, bro. My life insurance was my pickup line. I'm like, because I have a half million dollar policy. <laughs> hey, hey, so I, I used to use that too. Right? <laughs> yeah, did you really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, That's if funny. I die, if I die, you, I actually receive. My, I'm like, well, if you're my wife, man, you're gonna receive half a million dollars. She's like, oh my god, why would you tell me? I'm like, no, I'm serious. If I'm alive, I'm gonna take care of your ass. But if I die, you're gonna be taken care of as well. That was my pickup line at 19. So, so all the wow. young men out there, get yourself a life insurance policy. That could be your pickup line. There yeah, you I used it, guys. <laughs> I used it. Did you really? I'm like the chingas una coronita ya en Cancun. Yeah, yeah. Um, bro. If something, so I always thought about my mom and dad so i'm 23 years old i see this presentation talking about life insurance what do you think i said i was like yeah everybody needs it mm -hmm. my friends had all these jordans and nice cars and the honda civics with the nice rims but they had no life insurance like you fools are whack because you died tomorrow your parents have to go fund me for your ass you know what i mean no, no disrespect to me who does washes. it because a lot of people don't know how to prepare but for the people that know about it and they still do nothing about it still decide to buy the jordans instead of buying life insurance bro you're shot you know what i mean like mm -hmm. you gotta do it like boss up if you're a real boss have some Millionaires are not millionaires because they have million dollars in the bank. Millionaires are millionaires because they have assets worth millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have assets worth millions of dollars, you can have a life insurance policy that's about a million dollars for like 80 to 50 bucks a month to 100 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So you can still be worth as an asset over a million dollars on life insurance. Mm -hmm. So when I heard about life insurance, I was like, yeah, everybody needs it. And then they showed how much they got paid through life insurance. I'm like, What? You tell me that if I sell a policy, I'm gonna get paid this much, and they're like, "Yes." I was like, "Come on!" And then they were, they're, then they show me pictures of them traveling and how the company was growing and traveling, and teaching entrepreneurship, giving people opportunity to teach them how to how money works, teach them how to be business owners, how to become brokers, open up offices, and then they're gonna travel the world. I'm like, "Damn, this sounds too damn good to be true." Mm -hmm. But again, if this is legit, it's gonna blow up in people's faces. And if it's not legit, I'll just come back and bring my sledgehammer and make sure I destroy the goddamn place. I was like, bro, I'm like, piss me off. Watch what I can do with that sledgehammer, right? So I'm like, so like, because seriously, I said, if they're screwing me over, then I'm going to be pissed because don't mess with me, bro. Like, I'm broke, man. I come from the east side. I'm from the hood of Bakersfield. My dad left when I was a kid. My stepdad was hard on me. My mom has depression. My brother left me. Like, I go to the rigs. These fools punk me. I became a boss. I got so much hate and pain inside me that I'm like, if you're messing with me, bro, like, I'm going to come after you guys' throats. But if this is legit, it's going to blow up in people's faces. So it goes again. What do you do? Do you take the opportunity? Do you jump? Or do you don't jump? Mm 
Mm-hmm. I can let fear be bigger than my purpose. I can be let fear be bigger than my family. If this was a slight opportunity for me to make it happen for my family, bro, I was willing to work 30 hours a day just to make sure I can come through for my parents. And at I, that time when you started, you didn't have nothing? I had nothing, bro. That? Disability, bro. My car was getting repossessed back in my mom's house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I went from living with my brother, having my own place with my brother, to living back in my mom's house, bro. That's humbling, you know, because mm-hmm. by that time, guys, I was, you know how much I was getting paid when I was 15? $10 an hour, bro, mm-hmm. which is now minimum wage. That was back in 2005. That's what I was making. So I was used to making money mm-hmm. because of hard work. So having to move back in with my parents, bro, that wasn't easy for me. Mm-hmm. So I see this presentation. I'm like, man, if this is a chance. I'm like, all right, let's screw it. The only reason, bro, that I, I stuck around to it, I didn't pass my test right away. It took me like a year to pass my test. <laughs> yeah, bro. I couldn't study, bro. I have ADHD. Steve I'll be sitting there like, this shit's boring, right? I'm done. Don't so, give up, guys. That's yeah, motivation. Yeah, there. man. It took me like a year to pass my test. I was like, that's me and way. Why do you keep showing up to the trainings? Why do you keep showing up to the office? You're not even getting paid. I'm like, you're the way, homie. You're in school for four years and your ass is not getting paid either. Leave me the hell alone. I'll mm-hmm. eventually figure it out. I'm like, I guarantee you by year four, I'll be passing you guys up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I knew, bro, because then I also knew that businesses don't blow up from one day to the next. Mm-mm. I can take you one year. This broadcast mm-hmm. can take four or five years until people start listening to it and start saying, you know what? Mm-hmm. This is going to be something big for me one day. Yeah. We don't know. You get me? So yeah, for me, exactly. it's like a business, 99% of business owners, not to unmotivate people, but 99% of business owners have to shut down their business the first four years. So 99%, that tells you that only 1% of America is going to actually pull through. Mm-hmm. And if it matters to you, you're going to be that 1%. Yeah. And you know what's funny as well, bro? You know what percent of people in America make over $424,000 a year? What percent? 1% of America. 1% of people in this country make $424,000 a year and up. So... When I finally got my license, bro, I was getting my ass kicked. I was recruiting my friends. I'm like, bro, let's get our licenses. Let's open up offices. They're like, yeah. They're like, wait a minute. So we have to get licensed? Yeah, I failed it. I quit. I'm like, fool, I failed this shit five times. It'll be all right. Like, <laughs> like these, they're like, and they're like, well, what are we doing? I'm like, I don't know, bro, but we're going to do it, right? So we didn't know how to sell, bro. We didn't know how to write policies. We didn't know how to do nothing. Like, my brokers were just getting started. So it was a crap show, but we had heart and we had vision. We're like, well, eventually we'll figure this out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like being a parent. You don't know what the hell you're doing right away, but you grow into it. Yeah. With your second kid, you kind of screwed up as well, but then with your third one, you become a pro. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so it's kind of like you're, you're, everything's a process to evolve into something great. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm sitting there, bro, and I'm getting, like, I'm getting my ass handed to me. Year one, ass handed to me, not licensed. Year two, ass handed to me, not uh, licensed now, getting my ass handed to me. My girl gets pregnant, working at Fast Trip, you know, at, at, right there by Ming Avenue. And, uh, and I told her, babe, I was like, you know, when she got pregnant, I said, babe, I said, look, I'm going to ask you for one thing. This is why it's so important from girls who are like, if their man like, wants to be successful and they're thriving for women to respect. And also, man, if you want a better life and your wife is trying to succeed, mm-hmm. why well, had to respect? Because mm-hmm. I told my wife, I said, look, baby, one, well, she wasn't my wife. She was my girlfriend. I was like, look, if you, if you stick by my side and you respect my business, or I said, first, if you respect my biblical beliefs, my biblical beliefs, one. Number two, you respect my business. And how I'm going to hustle, how I'm going to bust ass. And number three, you respect that I'm going to retire my parents. If you can respect those three, I'm going to give you the life that 50 men together won't be able to give you. I said, but if you get in the way of those three things, you're going to go to war. You changed your pickup line. Oh, yeah, I changed my pickup <laughs> line. It was, it, that one was deep, right? Yeah, that was And I deep. was like, if you get in the way of those three, I said, you and me are going to go to war. And trust me, you don't want to go to war with me. And she was like, so, can you respect those three? She's like, I can respect them. I said, okay, because I'm not going to be there for your pregnancy. I'm going to be working. So I was working, bro. My girl's working at a gas station. She's struggling. I'm struggling. The business is barely making it, bro. Mm-hmm. I have to pay my office rent, 800 bucks a month. I have to pay my house rent, 500 bucks a month. Plus, I have to work on my own. So I have to, you know, everything's myself. My own gas, my own food, everything. Cell phone, my expenses for my business, and everything. Even trying to hire a staff when you, I can't believe in a 40, bro. My, I would have to pay my staff some, sometimes more a week than I was making money on myself. Mm-hmm. Because I had to pay her. And then I would go, I would, bro, I used to tell my wife, like, babe, what's to eat? She's like, there's nothing to eat. I'm like, okay. And I would tell my agents, hey, guys, so my wife cooked. I'll be back. She's like, all right, no problem. I'm like, I'm going to go home. I would have to eat cereal, bro, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I remember if my wife had something called WIC. I thought it was, I thought it was cool. I was like, well, you know, I don't know damn freaking food stamps. No disrespect for those who do. But I was like, I'm not eating food stamps. Hell no, it's not going to happen. And then the lady's like, it's not food stamps. This is like for the diet of your wife because she's, you know, she's pregnant. So you have to stay, have a certain diet. I'm like, all right, whatever. But if it wasn't for that damn wick, bro, that milk and those beans and eggs. rice and the eggs, bro, there's no way I would have ate. 
There is no way, bro. I used to go mm-hmm. to the office sometimes on an empty gas tank, show up empty uh, to my to my office, and, like hungry, bro. No food. I had no food. Then I couldn't make it. Go back home, get something to eat, come back to the office because there was no gas money. So I had to be there from eight o'clock in the morning to one o'clock in the morning without having nothing to eat, bro. Sometimes people used to walk in with chips and like, oh, you want some chips? I'm like, yeah, they go home, <laughs> right? Like, got the whole goddamn bag. Like, Thanks, bro. Right? That was my lunch. Like, but I couldn't share that pain to nobody mm-hmm. because I'm like, I can't sell the nightmare to people because I'm not, I can't show that yet. We all have to go through it. Mm-hmm. You get me? So then I was going through it, bro. And then finally, I tell my girl, She's six months pregnant, bro. I was like, I'm like, babe, uh, you know what? I think I'm done. She's like, what do you mean? She's like, I'm, a, I'm done. She's like, what do you mean you're done? I'm like, I'm done, babe. I, I think I'm going to go be a bartender and come to that restaurant with my cousin Rafa. And then she's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. I'm like, why? She's like, you're too good. You can't do that. I'm like, no, babe. I can barely support your ass. I can't even buy you the creams for your stomach. I can't buy you the pants you need. I, should build, I can't even buy your bigger bras up. She's like, I'm fine. I don't need anything. I'm like, no, you're not fine. I'm a man, and I'm not providing. I got to take care of you. She's like, listen, I'm fine. I'm okay. I don't need anything, babe. I believe in you. I know you can do it. And I'm just like, oh, man. I'm like, all right, I guess. That was like October. No, that was October of 2015. December, we're struggling. I go with some mentors of mine to Puerto Vallarta. They, they're paying for my trip. So I go out there for a business meeting and they take me out there, bro. And uh, it was a company trip and I qualified. I didn't have enough money to even go, bro, but they kind of helped me out a little bit. I go to Puerto Vallarta. I come back, bro. I, I learned some some really good information. That's why it's so important to have mentors for anybody in the broadcast listening. You have to have mentors, man. Even if you get paid or not, work for free, but have mentors in your life. Mm-hmm. You give me like half people to advise you. Even if you have to show up to where they're at, even if it costs you money, you're not wasting money. You're investing money being around people who are going to make you better, right? Yes. So I go. I come back, bro. That was, And I talked to a guy named Rodolfo Vargas. Shout out for him. He works in PHP as well, my company. Mm-hmm. He's like, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to make 10 grand a month. I was like, yes, right? Because the most I had probably ever made was probably about like 3500 So he's like, if you do this, you're going to make 10 grand a month. I'm like, ah, whatever, right? So I come back. I'm like, because now you have, I was in such a dark place where I didn't believe it no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, can, I didn't believe I can do it no more. I'm like, man, but hopefully, hopefully he's right. Like, if it's true, then it's gonna be tight. Sure enough, in January, bro, I make six thousand five hundred. My son is born; is supposed to be born in April of two thousand sixteen. So that's January of two thousand sixteen. So I'm like, okay, I make six thousand five hundred. I show my wife the the check on Friday. It's gonna be like forty five hundred bucks, and she's like, what's that? I'm like, we're gonna pay this on Friday. She's like, no, you're not. No, we're not. I'm like, yes, babe. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. It was how do you know? And I have to double like like show her proof. I'm like, this is we're getting paid. And she just covers her face, bro, starts bawling because we can finally buy the crib, the car seat. Her sisters were not supportive at the time, her getting pregnant by me. One of her sisters told her, you got married to a guy who's not going to take you nowhere in life. So her family was not supportive of me getting her pregnant. Her mom was tight. Her other sister, Ariana, they were about it, bro. But the other sister was like, bro, you made a terrible decision getting with that fool. You know, because, you know, just because the, situation it, the situations were in. And then uh, she starts crying. I'm crying, too, because I'm like, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. 4600 bucks, bro. Whenever you're broke, it's something, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. something, bro. And yeah. then uh, the next month, on February, I make twelve thousand five hundred for the first time. Wow! And I'm just like, oh, damn. And then in March of 2016, my son is born premature. While we're in the hospital, bro, we made eighteen thousand dollars. He was in the hospital for over a week and a half, eighteen grand while I was there. My older brother finally calls me, Ricky Aguilar. If you guys follow him, Ricky TCO on Instagram, right? My yeah. older brother. He was a big old PHP Nazi, bro. He hated PHP. He's like, because he saw me make money to be bro for two years. Mm-hmm. He hated my company, bro. He's like, that business is not real. It's fake, you know? And he's like, hey, man. He goes, so let me ask you a question. I'm like, what's up, bro? He's like, how does this PHP crap work? I'm like, hell yeah. Because I just always think <laughs> like to myself. <laughs> yeah, because my brother's a gangster, but like, my brother's badass. So I always told myself, like, like there's, there's 25,000 last agents now, but back then there was only like a few thousand. Mm-hmm. And I was probably like, when I was coming up, I was like in the top five of like best performers so i always said i said when my brother comes in se va a madrear a todos bro you know what i mean like my brother's gonna whoop. i'm like if you guys think i'm badass when my brother comes i used to also do like conventions bro like speaking at conventions i'd be like yeah my brother's gonna whoop all you guys ass i used to say it and, and like but they didn't know when i used to go back home my brother hated my company mm-hmm. and so nobody knew about like i have faith i have you know i believe <laughs> you know i have a dream so then it was like so then my brother shared was like how speech be crap works so he comes in in april 2016 bro uh, right away, uh, the first like ten months in the business, they made a hundred grand, 
And mm -hmm. then uh, the second year, bro, that was my, so my first year license, I made 32,000. Second year, I made like 161,000. And then my third year license, I made like 172. My brother made like 189. So my third year, my brother licensed, my brother made more money than me. I was like, God damn. damn. You know, and then my fourth year, I mean, like. Did he learn all this from you? Yeah, or, I taught him just, everything, bro. Okay. Yeah, I taught him, him, him. And I have multiple guys now that make multiple six figures that I've trained. And so then, but this guy, then Ricky, when was it? My first year, 32,000, 161, 172. My fourth year, I made 276. My brother made like two, 280. And then the next year, I make 430,000. Then my brother makes like six hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> then the next year I make half a million. My brother makes like eight hundred thousand, eight fifty. So right now he's only like fifty grand away from making a million dollar income, bro. My brother's oh a high school God. dropout. He's the one. Have you ever seen like the Rolls Royces at Baker's full of Lambos? Right mm -hmm. now he just bought, he just got rid of his Lambo and his Rolls Royce, got himself a Bentley. He's talking about a high school, bro. Like high yeah. school dropout, Sureño. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. like straight always this class. Not encouraging people to ditch class, but it was <laughs> it was like that, bro. You know. So then. So then now what's crazy is that we've been able to, now we travel with my wife, we, we're taking my kids to Jamaica. Uh, we constantly, like, we just got back from Aruba a few months ago. We just got back from Hawaii. We took my mom. We took my stepmom. We took my, my dad. We took my kids to Hawaii. We just, we lifted up. Uh, my dad has, a, he lives he in Michoacan, but La Frontera de Michoacan is Jalisco, and one of the, where we're from, mm -hmm. is Guadalajara, Jalisco. Oh, that's where we're from. Yeah, it's Guadalajara, Jalisco. Yeah, and then there's a place called Masamicla, Pueblo Magico. Where the cabins are at and the quads and all this crap, mm -hmm. right? So my dad lives 15 minutes away from there. So we build him like a half a million dollar cabin, bro. Big ass cabin, luxury cabin. It's over half a million dollars, bro. Like between his his three partners and him. Mm -hmm. But we're like, since 2016, bro. Remember when I told you guys I made 12500 mm -hmm. You know what I did? The first month I made 12500 I sent my dad 1500 bucks. Since 2016, of February 2016, my dad lives in Mexico. So when you send a thousand or two thousand dollars over there, bro, that's like forty to twenty-five thousand pesos a month. Yeah. Yeah. That's like boss living out there. Yeah. So since 2016, February 2016, every single month since then, I sent him, you know, anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred to fifteen hundred bucks a month. Now he has a cabin. I was able to retire him. A big old cabin, bro. Big old cabin. It's like it's like a four diamond cabin out there in and I my Samikla. And then from there, bro. Um, I got my mom, my mom got into the business, my stepdad, my real dad got his license too. I'm sorry, my stepmom got her license. And we started, now the family has a, we have a family business. My brother's now ranked number one in the country. There's 25,000 wow. people. Ranked number one, broken company, industry industry as well. For even our competitors, industry records, bro. Why is it that every time you train your sibling, they, they is, become better? Is this the <laughs> oldest one or something? Like, no, I taught my sister how to play soccer. And she got a scholarship to Santa Barbara. Yeah. And I'm over here. I was in the league right here, <laughs> the Mexican league in Bakersfield. <laughs> really? Yeah, man. It's just like yeah, we're just bro. that good, right? Yeah. And then my brother doesn't have kids. You know, I got I got my five year old Alexander. I got my 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 four year old little Angel. He's in turn four this month. And then I have my two year old daughter Iceleen. You know, she thinks she's eighteen, but it's all good. You know, and my little baby girl, my little bossy. princess. Oh, bro, she's my baby. You know, she's How old is she? She's two. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm terrible too, but it's the cutest man. So I I just love my house, but I have a badass wife too, man, and. And it's funny, Bill, because uh, uh, we, we took our kids, we travel, bro. We took them to Watul. We've gone everywhere with our kids, bro. We've gone to, but I took my wife to uh, at Athens, uh, uh, Italy, uh, Croatia, Olympia, Greece, uh, Santorini, uh, Costa Rica, Cancun, uh, Hawaii. I've taken my wife everywhere, bro. I've taken my mom everywhere, to Jamaica, everywhere. I've taken my kids to a lot of different places now. You know, and then we, me and my brother recently started buying more cabins in Jalisco, Guadalajara. I mean, so Jalisco, Masamicla, bro. We have cabins now that we're building out there, bro. So like to, uh, like to rent, like a, yeah, bro. Like, so okay. like like luxury badass cabins we're building oh, out nice. there, and uh, we had every car, bro. You know, like I, I'm still a dad, bro. So I have to wait out. Do I buy myself a Ferrari, or do I have six figures in savings and have savings for me and my kids? So since my brother doesn't have kids, he's like, he has all the cars that he wants. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for me, I still I didn't got. Know he didn't have kids, huh? Yeah, he has no have kids. Well, I'm like, he needs to hear the hello. Oh, bro, I'm about to oh you follow his brother. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. I, I've uh, I've seen him. No, I've never met him like in person, like yeah. I have you. But uh, yeah, and I, I know he's your brother and stuff yeah, like that. Man. You know, we look nothing like either, bro. No, he looks no. like a bulldog, <laughs> you know, nothing. And uh, and it's funny, bro, because like now, like we're traveling the world, and I see my mom, I see my dad, and I see that they're proud because back then, man, I used to live in Oswell. I said here, right, right in Oswell, Virginia, bro. And I said here, the ambulance passed by, and my brother left, and he was in the gang last. So I used to always ask myself, like, I wonder if that's him. So every time I heard the, uh, the ambulance, my heart used to beat. Mm -hmm. So I knew that one day my brother was going to end up in jail, six feet under, or he was going to, you know, kill somebody and end up in prison for life. Mm -hmm. So I said, if I don't hurry up and move quick, I'm going to lose my brother. My mom already has depression. 
So if I lose my brother and he, or he's either dead or in jail, my mom's going to be spiral down. Yeah. And then my dad's going to be affected. And I'm, a, and I'm like, what's the point of having all the money in the world when my brother's locked up? My mom is going to be the, dying of depression because her son's locked up. And my dad's stressing out in Mexico, dying because thinking her son, his son's going to die as well. In Mexico, I said, I got to move my ass fast, bro. Mm -hmm. So I worked 120 days straight without taking one day off, even Sundays, bro. I worked every day. Every single day, bro. And, and now when I look back, I have equity of the company. You know, I, I make good money, but I invest about a quarter million dollars a year back into investments. I invest back into properties. I invest back in not, not so much real estate, but back into my business. Also properties, you know, like investments that I have. And I also invest back into like my business, back into my bit. Everything has to do with helping me grow because, yeah. you know, that's why. But I'm not done with my journey because now I've taught so many people to make money. But there's a lot of raza, bro, they're still stuck, man, working in La Campo, in La Pisca, in construction. They think that nothing else is out there for them. Mm -hmm. So there are guys like me, bro, where I, I drive nice trucks. The reason why I try to take care of my appearance good, I try to go to the gym, I try to look good, drive nice cars, and do good as well, is not so much so I can be like, oh, I'm badass, but for me to be like, people literally come up to me like, hey, bro, I'm like, can I be honest with you? Like, my, my mom, my wife, my sweat glass neighbor was like, hey, can I ask you a question? My like, guy's yeah, like, you push? I'm like, <laughs> You think I'm a drug dealer? I was like, yeah. I'm like, I appreciate the compliment, but I don't, bro. I'm a businessman, you know? And But but I can inspire these guys, bro, because now they're like, I'm like, look, man, you see those narcos? I respect these guys. I'm not trying to throw no shots. I ain't trying to start no beef, but I'm like, we used to go clubbing. There'd be narcos and drug like drug dealers right there, and then we would also have our VIP. And I'm like, and I would think to myself, like, look, and I used to tell my agents, you see, those fools sell drugs. I make as much as money as these fools, and I do it clean. Mm -hmm. You know, if we can teach people to make actual money, without them having to go out there and break the law and do things like that. Mm -hmm. You know you know why I bought a Corvette? Because, had you guys ever heard that like, when Gringos would tell the Mexicans, go back to Mexico, mm -hmm. right? Being her wet back, go back to Mexico, bro. I'm never going to forget my dad was ordering Taco Bell, and he couldn't. Like, he was trying to explain to the, to the girl who she was black, she was taking his order, and he's like trying to explain that he wanted us a chalupa and this and that, mm -hmm. like from Taco Bell, mm -hmm. and there's a white lady behind him says, oh my God, we're in America, can you please speak English? Mm -hmm. My dad's a boss, bro. So my dad looked back, and my dad's a respectful Christian. So he looks back and he's like, he's sorry. I remember being five years old, bro. And I'm like, nobody ever disrespects my dad. And my dad just took it. My dad's being a Christian, bro. And I said to myself, I said, well, I said, que se traguen esas palabras, bro. So I bought myself a Corvette because a Corvette, back in the uh, 60s, the Mustang was a shit. Mm -hmm. But a Corvette was a monster. That was a dream car. So when I bought myself a brand new Corvette off the lot, like the ones they have in the display rooms, I bought it mm -hmm. not because I like Corvettes. I've never liked Corvettes. I bought it for the simple fact that that's an American's guy dream car. Mm -hmm. So when the gringos are in the 50s and 60s, we'll look back at my Corvette because they love Corvettes. They will look at my Corvette and see a Latino tatted up bumping a corrido, homie. That was yeah. the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. So I did it to show like we belong in this country, homie. And I'm going to show you how we earn our right in this country. And I'm going to show you guys that we're badasses too. And I'm going to show you that we're not just going to be gardeners and construction workers, but that we're badass businessmen. Yeah. So my motivation has always been to teach people to be badass because as a whole unit, I love humankind overall. I don't care if you're black, Mexican, Salvadorian, Caucasian. I love everybody equally. But who I fight for is the underdogs. Those who feel like they don't belong, they don't deserve, or they're nobody. Those are the people, bro, that I want to inspire to be badass. That's why I take care of myself. That's why I try to be a good husband. I try to be, because people think just because you make money, you're a dog. You should do this. You should be a player. You should, like, they try to put all that scenery on TV. BS, yeah. man. I'm not saying I'm the best husband. I've, I've had my crazy ass past, but since I got married, man, I made an effort to be a better husband. Does, does it mean I'm perfect? Hell no. Far from it. Nobody is. Nobody is. But you grow into being a better husband. You grow into being a better parent. Mm -hmm. So not just being a badass businessman, but being a badass son, a badass brother, mm -hmm. a badass husband, and a badass father. Mm -hmm. yeah. For me, bro, it, it, it was it was more than just running a business, man. It was, it was my principles and morals of life. Not like, only that, your wife deserves it. She does. You know, she was with you. Yeah, she does, and man. She and I and I treat I spoiled right her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I spoiled my wife. And I tell people like when we're in the house, she's the boss. Hey, happy wife, happy life, bro. Yeah. You know? I yeah. walk in. Those bro, words are true, man. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. Ma like imagine making all this money and you come home and your wife and you have a bad relationship where she's mad and you're trying to like be the boss. Bro, when I get there, she knows how the kids are are, are should be running. Mm -hmm. She knows what kid got there, you know, already what which kids she already wiped their ass, which one already ate, which one's already raised to bed. She knows if the homework's been done. She she has the house nice and clean. I'm not saying she knows she cooks bomb. I don't force her to do these things. She just knows that's like I'm doing my part, so do your part as well. Mm -hmm. Like we're a team uh -huh. that's her domain so when i walk in bro i'm awesome. I, I gotta be i gotta yeah. make sure i'm conscious 
that that's her domain. She's a goddamn boss, bro. Yeah. I'm just there to like, hey, hey, babe, you need me to do anything, right? Like, <laughs> like yeah, bro. I'll sell the house, bro. Like, I'm the boss. I tell her when I step out and make decisions, I'm the boss. But as soon as I walk into the house, you're the boss. You know, my wife's only five foot one, bro. But and it's not like I'm scared or anything like that. But I just respect her so much, bro. That yeah. it's just like, hey, that's her domain. Y si la casa no está toda limpia, I'm like, all right, I don't say anything. But if four days pass by and it's still, still the same, I'm like, babe, you know, um, I was kind of thinking, babe, you know me, when things are not so organized, it throws me off my game. She's like, no, babe, you're right. Like, don't worry, I'm gonna jump on it. I just had this backed up with laundry and this. I'm like, okay, no, I'm just, I'm just bringing it up. But I'm just like, why is the house not clean? It's not like that, bro. You know, like, yo respeto mi mujer, bro, because she's the boss. Yeah. And I love her so much, bro, and I'm just grateful, man. Like, like I tell men, like, why do we work? Like, why do, like, what do, young, why do young guys want nice cars? Because they, they can pull the girls. Why, I go, why do a lot of guys go to the gym? So they can pull the girls. So imagine, bro, you, have your, you work all this money, you do all this as well, and then you get home, you treat your wife like crap, okay? And then she, does, she stops glowing. You treat like crap. She doesn't feel good. She doesn't want to get ready. She doesn't get ready. She starts letting herself go because she feels like she's nothing. Mm -hmm. So therefore, she's like, why is she even in a fight? Mm -hmm. So when you could tell when a man's wife, like when a man's a good man, when the wife is glowing. Mm -hmm. Like if the wife is her makeup done, she's looking good, she's walking good, she's looking good. And not to impress the guy, but because that's just who she is now. Mm -hmm. That's because a man is like embracing her, bro. My yeah. wife, if you look at her, when she was gorgeous, bro. But if you look at her now, I'm like, she's getting fine. I wine. did see uh, the Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's real pretty. Yeah, she, yeah. She's, get, she's glowing up, bro. She's glowing up. And then and and she I'm looks taking, very humble. I'm mentally like, taking these notes like, into <laughs> yeah. Mira lo bonita, <laughs> bonita, pero bien humilde. Yeah, super oh, yeah. humble, You can bro. tell mm. through the pictures. Yeah, super yeah. humble, bro. And and the thing with my wife is like, I always tell people like, you know, like uh, uh, if, if you, there's no ugly wife. There's only poor husbands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is true. You know? Like, you don't like yeah. the way your wife looked after she has a kid? Cool. You know there's something called a tummy tuck? You know there's something called, a, you know, boot, breast implants? You know there's something called a BBL? I'm not saying that, like, my wife my wife doesn't have any of that stuff. She got her boobs done just because she has three kids. Mm -hmm. And she had big boobs when I met her. And then now, with like, the, after three kids, bro, they're not shaped to say. For me, I'm like, babe, you're bomb either way. But for her self-consciousness, mm -hmm. for the way she feels, she doesn't like it when she sees me. I'm like, Psh. all day long I'll take you. But for her, I'm like, yeah. cool. If that's what makes you feel insecure, fine, I'll pay for it. Why? Because there's feria. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I work for us to have the money for us to be able to do those type of things. Yeah. It doesn't mean like, oh, let's buy, let's make money and blow it. It means like, hey, babe, if we hit this tier of like numbers and we hit these goals, we'll put that, we're going to put this money to the side and we're going to invest it on that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's goals, right? So we mm -hmm. have goals. So when sometimes she's like, babe, I just want to be in bed with you all day long. I'm like, love, I understand that we, we get made more money, but I'm like, love, you want this and you want that, right? And she's like, yes. I'm like, baby, I, I got to go get it. And she's like, all right. All right, hurry up then. I'm like, all right, does that make sense? So yeah. it's, it's like that. But when, as my wife is progressing and looking badass, mm -hmm. I, look, guys do all this crap so they can get girls mm -hmm. to have sex. Mm -hmm. to, and then through a, a man's uh, heart, you get through his stomach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and and then a lot See? of us like, right? A lot of us <laughs> like cuddles. And a lot of us like, like to cuddle and a lot of us like respect sex. So sex, cuddle, food, and, and respect, right? Mm -hmm. We like those type of things as men. So think about treating your wife not the best mm -hmm. one she stops looking good therefore mm -hmm. sex she doesn't give it to you often or doesn't she's not enthusiastic about giving you sex mm -hmm. and she, you might not even like the way she's looking no more she might not be liking the way she looks so sex mm -hmm. doesn't feel the same yeah. two there's no respect if you're not respecting her so therefore you can feel like she kind of snaps or talks to someone or you can see that she doesn't respect you Three, she's definitely not being affectionate with you as well. And four, she's not cooking with love, so therefore it's not going to be the same. Yeah. So everything that a man works for can lose it if he doesn't treat his partner the correct way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So for me, I know that one thing, I love sex. If I can have it seven days a week, I do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but so for me, it's like, okay, what do I want? I want sex. Okay, cool. But I want to be attracted to my spouse mm -hmm. all the time. So I know make sure that I got to make sure that she feels good so she can look good so it, she can feel good as well. Two, if I treat her good, she's going to give me sex. She's going to give me everything. She's going to give me food. She's going to also respect me. She's going to take her in my house, and she's going to make sure that she also shows me affection and love. Mm -hmm. Everything that I work for, I'm going to have it at home. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's not so much about the cars you're driving, everything you have. It's about how your household is being mm -hmm. ran. Are you, like, is it kind of like the law of attraction? Yes. Mm -hmm. The law of attraction. Remember I told you guys, like, when I told my ex-girlfriend, like, I'm going to have a traveling room. I'm going to have to. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, so it would have been narcissist yeah. if I said it and I didn't do it. But yeah. I did it, bro. Exactly, exactly what I said I was going to do. Yeah. And then, you know, having a, a healthy home 
makes it easy to go to work. Yes. You're not stressed. Everything runs oh, yeah. smooth. There's a stat that so, so shows that a man who kisses his wife before he goes to work has 20 to 30 more success that day and in their career. That's why a man always needs a woman by their yes. side. That, and that's why I don't believe in this whole, oh, I'm the man. This I'm like, bro, get away with that horse shit from Mexico, bro. Like, that's a rancho type of crap. Of yeah. Ignorant people who didn't understand what it was to develop a kingdom. Yes. You get me? And, like, I come from hardcore Hispanic parents, but my dad to today, bro, he still buys his wife flowers every single day that it falls on the anniversary. Now, I'm not that, like, that, like, that, like my dad, but my dad's like that. But his, but he's a man's man. But I, I can tell that his wife is like his 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 partner, you know, yeah. and I respect that. And so I've also seen marriages. I also had another ma- a family that mom respected stepdad, but it wasn't the same because the kids were more important than dad. Mm-hmm. That stepdad, I'm sorry. So since me and my brother came more to my mom, being naturally as a mom, yeah. and we kind of put the step, we kind of put stepdad. Their relationship wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. And my dad, not that he put her first, but he gave my stepmom her place, and we didn't like it. But he gave her a place. Now looking back, coming from a stepkid, I'm like, damn. I'm not saying those men like, oh, a stepdad can abuse and physically hurt the kids and the mom doesn't say anything. I'm not talking about those moms. I'm talking about those moms that say, my kids are my world and you come in second place. I don't necessarily, res- uh, under, I don't really, now living in both ends, I'm not about that because I'm like, nah, listen, the Bible says that you and your husband become one. doesn't matter if you guys had kids together and it's a second marriage. Mm-hmm. You and them have to become one. Because when me, my, the reason why I look at it, I always tell guys, like, treat your wife good because there's going to be a time where you're going to get older and she's going to get older and the kids are going to leave home mm-hmm. and they're going to be skedaddling out during their own life. Mm-hmm. Like, when's the last time you took your mom to the movies? When's the last time you actually took your mom out to go have dinner? It probably hasn't been in a while, right? I do. I always do. You do? That's yeah. awesome. The lady's yeah. spoiled. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Like, and I can't get with my mom, but I can't really recall always taking my mom out. I always mm-hmm. take my wife out. On we have our Sundays. There, that's The that. cuñado and cuñada come over and Sundays are our, mm-hmm. our mom days. And, and, that, and that's our badass. Like, and that's one, well, that's one because the family gets together. But I'm talking about like going out there on a date, right? Like going to the movies with, with, with just you and your parents. Mm-hmm. That's not as often. Mm-hmm. Who, it's very rare. It's very rare. Mm-hmm. So what I'm getting at is like my mom, if my kids are eventually going to leave the house. And the only person I'll be staying with is with her. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm sorry, but I still want to be very sexually and active with my wife when we're 45, 50, bro. I still want her to be loving me. I still want to be attracted to my wife. I still want her to be attracted to me. So if I'm treating her all these years bad, and then once imagine when we're like 80 years old, bro, and we're going to the restroom mm-hmm. and we fall and we're like crapping ourselves, we're like, babe, help me, help me. She's like, oh, now you need my help, huh? <laughs> I thought I was worthless. What happened, you mother effort? Nah, hell nah. Why not? Well, if you think I can call an ambulance, but I'm not cleaning your ass. You know what I mean? Does that make sense, yeah, bro? Yeah. There's no way. There's no way I'm gonna treat her bad yeah. because because she's gonna be the person I'm be stuck with for life. Mm-hmm. And that's because you want to and she wants to too. Like, yes, like, bro. You gave me for now. Yeah, so for yeah. me, it's like, man, so money's all good. Everything's good. That's Saving's good advice good. for the young ones because the way the world is right now, it's like kind of weird. Yeah, See man. See that person, you know? Yeah, yeah, bro. People are like, and you don't want men leave their wives for another woman? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're so stupid, vato. I'm like, that girl's going to get beat eventually as well. Exactly. You're such an idiot. What you could have done, bro, is treat her better. You would have had a better res- result. Two, if you didn't like the way she was looking... Save some money on an anniversary. You can save up, you know, a few thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the year, go get your wife a BBL if that's what you didn't like about her. Go get her a tummy mm-hmm. tuck. Go get her titties done. Go get, go build her body the way you want it. Because guess what's going to happen, homie? When she becomes a single mom and she sees all her homegirls getting their bodies done, mm-hmm. you know what's going to happen? You're, she's going to go get her body done when she's single eventually because she'll feel better about herself. Mm-hmm. She's going to start fresh and you're going to have another man banging her guts and looking looking a lot better than she was when you she was with your ass. Just because you decided to go with another woman or do whatever you do, you want to go out there and do your thing and you didn't invest into your wife. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just like, pff, no hay no más hombre pobre. Yeah. You know, so for me it's like nah. Especially homie. for the ones that have a good wife at home, cooking yeah. for them and chinga, you know? Yeah, like invest into your wife, man. That's the best investment you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's Especially not, the one that sticks by. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's yeah. like exactly. She's sick by my son. Yeah. She deserves it. So you know, for for my so when you talk about how do I get into the business, man, uh, it was it was just you guys know the story now, but it was it was more than just money, bro. It was purpose. Yeah. When you chase purpose and you want to eat shit, bro, and you want to eat dirt in order for you to succeed for your family, you want to take that those battles of like two thousand years ago, man. Like if you guys were watching the movie The Spartans or Three Hundred and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or or Troy, 
you know, when you see these movies, I get very inspired by those things because it's like, man, these fools were willing to die, man. They used to, mm -hmm. imagine these guys, they knew that if the other opposite army will get to their village, they were going to rape their daughters, mm -hmm. rape their wives and slay them and kill their sons and take everything from them. So these fools were willing. Imagine, bro, when you have, you ever had a big ass kitchen knife at the house? And you're like, I wait, to go some man. So it's down poco, right? And you're like, I wasn't in yours. Imagine, bro, having some big ass swords and some shield, and then there's thousands, 50, 100,000 soldiers coming your way, bro. And you're in the front line, and they're charging, bro. Like, let's get it. How? You know you're going to get sliced up. Yeah. But they're willing to die, bro. Why? Because they're willing to die for their family. They're mm -hmm. willing to go through all of the pain for their family, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it should be if you want to make it in this life. You better be willing to eat everything, all the dirt, it, take all the crap, take all the pain, the emotional abuse, the, the, the humbleness, the being broke. You have to go through all of that if you want to make it. Because once you make it through, that's it. It's done. You can, once you can make that happen and continue having that fight, bro, you become, you become the, the shield for the family, bro. And the person that gets sliced up is you. That way your family doesn't get cut up. That way your daughter and your wife and your kids can have a better life. Mm -hmm. That's that's just the way I made it in business. Love that. Love that. Yeah, man. So that's that's I think I that's thing, I think I got all that to say in that in this broadcast, bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah man. It's pretty much it's inspiring. Yeah, I appreciate very, that. Very, I love that. Appreciate it. And that. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people out there that needed to hear that. Yeah, I appreciate oh, yeah. that. Appreciate mm -hmm. that, guys. It's like all. it's the well, one thing I did want to know, uh, I was trying to look for the, um, you guys at PHP Agency did a uh, uh, an event over there in uh, Vegas yeah. at the MGM Gram. Yeah. The Spectacular? Yeah, the Spectacular event. I was trying to look for the video. Yeah. No stuff and, and nowhere. Yeah, we, once we post the video, because then we bring it down and then we have another event coming up. So we have another one coming up in Las Vegas as well. Oh, so nice. it's cool, man. We, we brought down like Kevin Hart. Bro, if yeah. You, yeah, Kevin Hart. If you, bring that, if you listen to Kevin Hart, a lot of these guys, bro, that make the money, bro, like, we had a chance to have Pitbull. We had Mike Tyson there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Kobe Bryant before he passed away. We had George Bush as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Nicky Jam. Mm -hmm. We had man, we've had all kinds of different crazy people there. Uh, Grant Cardone, this badass uh, entrepreneur, uh, Magic Johnson. So we've had a lot of different people, bro. And uh, you know what they all have in common? Wow. They all, they all. If you hear their mindset, bro, it's all about the same thing I'm talking about right now. Mm -hmm. Just pushing through the BS. But everybody mm -hmm. starts off pff, eating eating crap, bro. Yeah, everybody. So that's why we bring them because people yeah, well, they're, they're they're present and like have a good time and like put up a show. But then we interview them. There's a reason why we interview them mm -hmm. because we want to hear their mindset. That's yeah. why these broadcasts are so important. Yeah. Yes. You know, it helps you shift your mindset, especially when you're driving and you're just it's mm -hmm. the it's better than TV. Yeah. You know, because you're listening. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, it's good. It's good to listen to music. You know, but broadcast, man. These are these things are powerful. You learn. Yeah, you learn. You you Very. bro. Perimbo la mañana interviewing that guy, which I don't know who that guy was, and I'm never gonna remember. Do you know now? I don't. Wow. I still don't know. Still don't know. I still don't know, bro. I, have, I don't. I can't remember my, my own birthday. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> but I'll tell you, man. Like, I and he doesn't know who he is. But if this if, if this ever reaches out to him and he ever hears this, like who, the guy who taught about affirmations on the on there, mm -hmm. bro, that that's the guy that changed my life forever. You know what I mean? So and I became the man I became with because of my upbringing, but because of a broadcast, bro. Because of even Perimbo la mañana is. Or like a radio TV show, that's what it is. It's a broadcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so so you know, they changed my life forever. That's why I was. And so you'll be about. changing somebody's life. I hope. Yeah. I really hope somebody comes across this broadcast and really listens. At least to one. It. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I do have a takes. question. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in getting insurance, how can they contact? Yeah. Or? So so uh, the best way I think is the best way is also through my Instagram or Facebook. A lot of people, like a lot of my clients now, they hit me up on Instagram. Okay. And uh, they just yes. hit me like their date of birth. They, they, they just hit me up. And I'm, I'm very responsive with all my clients. Okay. So I respond to them. And the cool thing is, like, I, I broke out to a lot of companies. Okay. So I'm like, I'm like the Amazon, the Costco. Like, there's State Farm, there's Geico, there's Affleck. There's good companies. I'm never, you're never going to hear me bash any company, bro. There's a lot of good companies. The difference for me is, like, since I have so many of the biggest companies and I'm like the Costco, Amazon, mm -hmm. I just find, like, I help out people que no tienen papeles too, you know, that have an IT number or tienen una matricula. Oh, so if they, si no tienen, like, papers, they can oh, still... Oh, yeah, they can get life oh, okay. insurance, bro. And then the cool thing is a lot of clients don't know this, but mucha gente, like, you know, the number one reason why people go through a bankruptcy are medical bills. 74% mm -hmm. of everybody in America use their their life savings for medical bills, bro. So those burritos and echas, tortillas, they're going to catch up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. eventually diabetes, all that catches yeah. up. So life insurance is actually now, not through every company, through a handful, allow you to use up to 80% of your life insurance money. If you can't work, you get sick, get a stroke, heart attack, or cancer. Okay. So think about our parents. Mm -hmm. Our parents, bro, they're a lot 20 years or 30 years older than us. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to start fighting these illnesses sooner than we are. And right now that they're not really... 
Like they're starting to feel it, but they're not 100 percent sure. Like we had a guy, bro. He had he had got hit with COVID. Half a million, half a million dollar policy, not a big deal. He's paying like 70 bucks a month. Guy gets COVID, nothing happens. Guys get COVID again in February, ends up in a wheelchair. You know, respiratory affects you. Some guys were yeah. end up in a different condition. This guy ends up in a wheelchair. The company that was wor- one of the companies I represent out of the half a million, bro, grabbed 400000 from his life insurance and cashed him out four hundred grand, bro. Pays off his house, modifies his house, makes it wheelchair friendly, pays off all his medical bills, and the rest of the 100000 he doesn't touch. When he passes away, his family gets the rest of the 100000 Cuanta gente, bro, trabaja en la pizca, mm-hmm. trabaja en la uva, construction, no tienen papeles, bro, they get hurt. The state doesn't do nothing for them. Mm-mm. So life insurance policies can actually back them up as well. So even if they got awesome. COVID, if yes. it, it, you guys are taking... We take oh, care okay. of our clients, man. Oh, it's that's good really, to know. It's really, really sick. Porque hay mucha gente that doesn't have papers and... Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, you I, know, they're afraid, too. Maybe they think it's maybe they think it's a waste of money when they in reality it's not. Mm-hmm. It's, bro... Uh, they yeah, added like, the it see it as a bill. Yeah. 10, 12 bucks. Okay. 15 bucks. Ya escucharon. Yeah, bro. Like, I always tell people, like, mira, si vamos a malgastar con las, con las micheladas en la, exactly. en, la, en, la, yeah. en la Starbucks, yes. bro. Si vamos a malgastar, hay que malgastar adecuadamente, like, the proper way. You know what I mean? Like, que valga la pena. Yeah, bro. I have, a, man, I have a ton of single moms that hit me up for life insurance. Have two kids, three kids, bro. 500,000, 750,000. They're paying 40, 50 bucks a month. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and think about this. They die. Those kids are set, bro. Mm-hmm. Old wealth. Have you guys heard about old wealth before? Mm-hmm. Where you transfer wealth to one generation to the next. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do it, is life insurance. Mm-hmm. Bro, the Greens have been doing this for years. That's why, like, mm-hmm. imagine, bro, we pass away, we leave our kids. Yes, we don't do that. We don't do yeah. it. Bro, they used to pass on money for generations, bro. Like, yeah. one family receives half a million. Like, back then, it'll be like 50 grand or uh, $10 because back then, life insurance was, you know, the, the money was valued smaller. So, $10. And then one family got 1000 and eventually, that family turned that to fifty thousand. That family turned to fifty thousand to five hundred thousand. Then from five hundred thousand to yeah, five so five million. And then from five million to five hundred million. Then from five hundred million to you know a billion dollars of life insurance. And then before you know it, these fools own the hotels called the Marriott. Wow. And we're over here, bro. GoFundmes and car washes and con nada yes. Come on. Porque es lo que nos enseñan, you know, like. Yeah. 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 So we that's just gotta good information. Boss up. We gotta boss up. Yes. That's yeah. it, man. I like. I pass away. I want my kids to have a few million, yeah. you know, and and my but they're not my beneficiaries. I didn't choose them because I don't want my kids receiving a million. I want my, my wife has access to the money. My stepdad like gets like a quarter million. My mom gets like a few million. My brother gets a little bit of money as well. Mm-hmm. He'll probably buy, buy, buy more Bentleys and hopefully takes my kids on vacation, right? <laughs> and uh, and then my wife gets a few million because that's my wife, bro. Yeah. bro yeah. I, well, imagine, bro, my, I die. And then another fool was like, "What the nice trocona, cuz una mamalona? Hey, what's up? I, I don't know. Your husband just died, but I just want to tell you're beautiful. If you ever need, and imagine she really doesn't have money, bro. And she's like, damn, I gotta feed these kids. This is like, I'll take care of you. I got your back. Like I always thought you're beautiful. I don't have kids, but I'm willing to take your like help you out with your kids if you're needing. She's like, oh, thank you. You're so sweet. And that's why it starts mm-hmm. for need, yeah. not because oh, damn. Let me examine this fool's gonna be a good man for my kids. As long mm-hmm. as says, hey, you know what? I'm gonna kind of I'll help you. I'll be there for you and your kids. She's like, yeah, bro, I just want to focus on my kids. But see, I necessarily see that, bro. Mm-hmm. See, I get my daughter in cama ajena, bro. Whose fault is that? Yeah. It's my fault, bro, because I exposed her to that position. Mm-hmm. But imagine, bro, oh, I'll take care of you. You ever need anything? She's like, homie, I'm I got $3 million in the <laughs> bank, homie. I don't need nothing. Like, I don't need anything. Yeah. Now, any, I would tell my wife, if you do marry somebody, I want you to marry a Christian. I want you to marry somebody who, who's going to treat my kids good mm-hmm. and respect, but make sure that that guy's a good guy. But you're not going to marry him because I need, because I'm going to make sure you have everything taken care of. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's, you know. I that's just, how you, that's how people should think though it, it just you know it for me it's just it's just it, it, i was raised a little bit different you feel me oh, even though it's almost like my dad's tell. a macho bro mm-hmm. it's just no, different like, everything you're saying is like positive feedback and i'm taking it in myself you know yeah, yeah man so that's, I just, good advice. that's my that's my perspective of life man Nice, <laughs> awesome man <laughs> appreciate it bro that's it for me was your croquets yeah thank you so much alejandro for coming to uh, the podcast, I really appreciate you. Absolutely, you took your bro. time to come over here, appreciate it. and um, for taking for us in consideration. Exactly, yeah. yeah. No, I, bro, I appreciate the work you did on my truck. I, I just got, I got yeah. it after I had all these designs <laughs> for my truck, and I was like, "Hey, bro, can you make this happen?" He's like, "Uh, yeah, we can." Make I was it a little happen. worried. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, that was like, and then uh, your, you know, your your partner was like, "Look, bro, we don't do this type of work." I was like, "I'm like, have you ever done it?" He's like, "Well, we haven't, but." I, I mean, I know we could probably do it, but I don't want to screw it up. I said, look, let me tell you something. I told your partner, I said, look, bro, just try it. Because mm-hmm. if it does work, then in the future you guys can do it. But if it doesn't work, I'm cool with it. We can just 
we'll just fix it again and we'll do we'll do it until it works. Yeah, that was I'm, cool that you said that. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it's okay if you guys screwed up as long as we can fix it again and then we'll just do yeah. it. We'll just we'll do it until it works. Yeah. And I'm like, now would you guys get some practice? And then we, and if it comes out good, and it came out, bro, the first try, it was a hundred percent. It didn't even take me that long either. Yeah, bro, I was like, I was like, cool, man, that was perfect. So I told I told you for now, hey, man, if you yeah. ever need anything, bro, hey, I appreciate it. So when you asked for me to come down, I was like, hell yeah, I appreciate. So you guys, quality of work, man, made me have the you know desire of you know. I was very happy, bro. I was very, I was like, hell yeah, I'll come over here and back yeah. it up. And anytime you need anything, I was man, just you know, appreciate hit me it, up, and you know, you already know I got you. Yeah, man, we'll stay connected, bro. Serious, appreciate it. Pues ahí está. Thank you so much again. Um, pues, um, make sure you guys follow him on his Instagram. Mm -hmm. Follow Prisma and follow me. Uh, once again, uh, thank you for listening to the podcast and watching on YouTube as well. Make sure you guys do subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment down below your favorite part. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, like oh, you're the best of the Bro, how long have you guys had this little broadcast going? Apenas es el third one with you? Yeah. Third one with you? Well, last one was my first one. Oh, that's one was For her, yeah. I just brought one. Barely Barley. I'm barely learning. I got good, it. good. You have the voice for it, too. Really? Yeah, yeah. When I heard you, I was like, I'm happy that I brought it in. Yeah, you have a voice for it. You know what my mom used to say? Remember, it's funny that you mentioned Violín de la Mañana. ¿Cómo se llama? La Cachorra. Yeah, yeah. Dude, growing up, siempre me decía that I had her voice. Oh, yeah. I yeah, was like, as soon as you spoke, I was funny. like, but you have a you have a perfect voice for it because when I heard, it, I was like, damn, because like I can hear you speak. Or what? Yeah, like <laughs> you like you you have a nice voice, but then when when you hear your like when when it's just everything's zoned out and yeah. you can just hear it because when you have the yeah. headset, you can hear mm -hmm. people's voices a little bit. Yeah. Like I was like, damn, she has. So I like about it. I mean, Thank we're you. right here in front of each other, pero con esto, yeah, it sounds different. Yeah, you man. feel like you're, you know, yeah, yeah guys. No, but you made it easy. You made it really easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very. Mira, can we take a Te gusta el podcast. Me gusta, me gusta.